this is a joint work of uh, Daniel uh, Skorinking, Ina Kuzner, um, Melissa Terras, and Moshe Laviv from different universities. Um, okay. So what can we learn about minorities' representation by inspecting uh, museal catalogs? Computational analysis of the, that demonstrates biased representations related to ethnicities has been widely covered in the literature, mostly by analyzing texts. But anal anal analysis of museum catalogs and online museum uh, collections provide additional insights of the perception of minority cultures. Machine actionable catalogs of museums are still rare and in most cases not available for the public. Using, using catalogs as data of inquiry is a leading concept of collections as data. The aim of this paper is to show how the analysis of the museums, of the museum catalogs and the online museum collections can reveal uh, dominating attitudes and multiple perspectives in the perceptions of minority cultures. We will argue that unless the data is in a data set, we will also argue that unless the data and the data set are pr properly, properly contextualized and re represent the intentions of the collector, there is an obstacle in the immediate reading of the content as data for this inquiry. We compare two different catalogs and two ethnic groups and demonstrate how conceptual re representations related to Jews and Armenians fluctuate. We assume that contexts of these ethnic minorities are produced in dependence to the location and the culture that collects and describes them. In previous work, Kirchner et al. showed, for instance, that the notion of Jewishness is represented differently in terms of geographical and temporal coverage. That is, we have different perspectives of what is Jewish. In, and, she comp and they compared the uh, findings of Jewish-related uh, um, objects in the Metropolitan uh, Museum of New York and the United Catalog of uh, Russia Culture. Um, our current analysis includes search results of Jews and Armenians, ethnicities, that represent the concept of otherness within each of these countries. We do it in the British Museum at London and the State Historical Museum in Moscow. The museums are, were chosen as they both represent an imperial archive, collections that include multiple historical objects located in capital cities of the two countries. Their online digital catalogs produce sufficient results to analyze the rep representation of minorities and perspectives of these major memory institutions on what is deemed as an ethnic minority or part of an imperial state. Between the years 1828 and 1991, Armenia was part of the Russian Empire and then the Soviet Union, and it was integrated in, in a variety of political and social structures. Um, okay, I, I am not sure, my slides for a minute, okay. And the uh, Jews are an et ethnic minority that existed with, that exists still within both countries and at the same time were also part of the area under the British mandate in Palestine and thus were under the British Empire's rule between 1917 and 1948. These are some of the findings in the catalogs. Okay. As a method methodology, after, um, what we did, we collected data and we structured it. And we, then we, we used the combination of distant reading, um, especially visualization methods to analyze the results from the catalogs. And we also used some close reading in order to study separate objects and try to understand uh, their existence in the collections. The data was collect collected from the museum websites in June and July to 2022. 
And uh, the way we did it, we used a Python code to read, to search and uh, extract all of the uh, all of the search results. We used the the terms and inflections and derivations of the the search uh, related terms. Um, and then we used OpenRefine to uh, clean the data, structure it, unify the, f the, 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 the metadata terms because uh, they were in different languages. Uh, of course, we had the, the typical uh, noisy kind of information in the catalog and we used, uh, we, we united this and used the um, geonames to geocode the locations. So at, at the end, we had a, a, a unified um, table for all of the results that we found using uh, OpenRefine or whatever representation that we have. So just to, to so th the point is that we collected everything that we could with this search uh, words, but we found, for instance, that there are skews that may change all the uh, conclusions that we may draw from these collections. For instance, um, th there was a skew towards a Natufian period of artifacts because most of them, like there was a, this huge collection of almost 3,000 uh, artifacts that are part of uh, findings of archeological excavations in Israel which uh, looks the, 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 which looks like this. So we have a lot of artifacts, but they, they give us no further information about any aspect that we would like to um, ask about our uh, findings. So I think I will now, this is a, an example, <laughs> okay. So now I will give Daniel the, yeah, so thank you, Yael. And uh, so what did we actually learn about the portrayal of uh, Jewish and Armenian uh, culture and uh, the difference in, uh, in how they are represented by a big British museum, big and important British museum, and a big and important Russian museum? Uh, so first of, of all, uh, we looked at the spatial distribution. So basically, where, this, where, where are the objects created? There is a creation place, basically, item. And if we look at this map, like the first thing we see here is just like the, probably the colonial extent of uh, the former British Empire. So we have like for, for like, we have some Jewish like items, Jewish items or items labeled as Jewish uh, coming from South Africa, coming from India, quite a lot of them. Uh, a lot of them are, oh sorry, a lot of them are coming from Egypt. Now this can be ambiguous of course, because Egypt is also kind of geographically close to, uh, Israel, but also it's been long in the British sphere of dominion, of course, and we know that many cultural heritage objects from Egypt ended up in British museums, so some of them were apparently Jewish, and we can actually compare it to the, um, to the map from the Russian, the Russian Historical Museum, where we can actually see that it's much less kind of globalized, and it has less coverage, and it's mostly focused on basically the um, Jews of like Eastern Europe and Russia. And like there is, for instance, some post-Soviet countries uh, like Kazakhstan, which are totally absent in the, uh, in the British Museum. So we can see that this, uh, these are mostly Jewish items related to Russian Jewry or the, the Jewry of like Eastern Europe. So probably this is mostly like uh, limited to Ashkenazi Jews and uh, uh, on the other hand, in the British Museum, you can see that it's more kind of evenly distributed and you, you, can, you have some items actually from uh, Spain and Morocco, so there is probably some Sephardic element to it. Uh, yeah, and uh, if we look further into the Armenian items, again, we can see that uh, the British Museum has a much larger extent to, uh, like, like mar much larger geographical coverage of where the items labeled as Armenian come from. And if you look at the top five countries, you might actually wonder like why Armenia isn't, in, isn't even the fir in the first place. Like, why are the most I items labeled as Armenian in the British, like if you look for Armenian stuff, the most items you get are actually coming from Italy or Israel. And you might think, isn't there a mistake in your data? Didn't you mix up like Israeli and Armenian data? And that's what I thought when I was processing the data. And I checked and no, actually. Uh, so why so much Italy for the Armenian items? Actually, because Armenia was already part of the realm for the Roman Empire. And so you get a lot of these items which are actually Roman coins minted by the Roman emperors, 
but they actually do mention Armenia. You can see there, Ar Armenicus. Uh, so it's like the name in, in, in inscription, but it's more like a reference to land. I mean, it's, can we actually claim this is, this is a representation of Armenian culture? Probably not, I mean, it's more like Roman culture, but it still has a m reference to Armenia as a land of origin. And this shows that Armenia was already on the map uh, in, the, in the Roman times, but it's still kind of a, I mean, can you say this is a portrayal of culture? Not really, and yet this is what you get if you look for Armenian items in the British Museum. Uh, and why so much Israel? Uh, well, partly because of the presence of the, of the usual traditional presence of Armenians uh, on the, what is called the Holy Land for, for most religions. Uh, so there are many, as you know, there is still Armenian church in the, in the center of Jerusalem, so, uh, and there are many, they, at least there were many Armenian run shops, and if the, it's mentioned in the acquisition notes, then it gets retrieved if you look for Armenian stuff. But again, this doesn't look to me like a representation of Armenian culture, it's just a souvenir of, from Jerusalem. On the other hand, you have some things which actually do have Armenian inscriptions, but were found in Israel again. So uh, it's a bit tricky to separate the items which are just labeled Armenian because they have something to do with uh, Armenia and the items which actually do represent Armenian culture, like in this case, where you actually have the Armenian inscription in Armenian language. Uh, yeah, and of course, after looking at the um, geographical distribution, we also looked at, looked at the temporal distribution because that's ne the next logical thing to do. Uh, yeah, and sorry, there is um, something messed up with the slide, so they should, the line should go up and it should say uh, it's like CE, and CE here and BCE here. So the line is actually the, the beginning of the of the common era. Uh, and you can see that uh, the temporal kind of distribution is very different. So uh, in the British Museum on top, uh, the, uh, the time span is basically, goes all the way to almost prehistoric times. And obviously these are archeological excavated items, just like Yael showed, uh, which are just found in the area which is now, uh, which is, uh, now um, Armenia, or which is now uh, Israel, uh, and um, and um, on the other hand, if you uh, yeah, this is this is Jewish data, so you can see that uh, in the Russian uh, museum, like uh, the the Jewish heritage basically starts with the 17th century, which makes total sense because only in the end of the 18th century, uh, they, they, the Russia basically acquired the sizable Jewish population after bar the partition of Poland, uh, of course. So, so uh, you can see that uh, in, the, in the British Museum on top, uh, like Jew Jewish culture is represented uh, in, in different time spans, including the more like biblical times. And as I will show later, it's actually very often mentioned in the Christian context, not in the Jewish context, but in the Christian biblical context, as you know, like basically actors in the Bible. Um, yeah, and this is the uh, this is the same graph for Armenian items. And again, you see, you can see items which are labeled as Armenian in the British museums, which go all the way back to uh, basically 12th century BCE. And uh, obviously, these are again uh, these are mostly uh, archaeological findings and coins and stuff like that. So things which are uh, mentioned as uh, found somewhere near Armenia by archaeologists, and they are retrieved to you if you look for Armenian. Uh, and on the other hand, in the Russian collection, like the Armenian things which are labeled as Armenian start only in the 12th century, roughly. And then there are some archaeological items from 12th and 13th century, but then again, uh, it kind of goes down and uh, the real representation of Armenian culture begins more or less in 18th and 19th century, which again makes sense because that's when Armenia kind of gradually becomes, uh, goes into the Russian sphere of influence, let's say. And of course, most of it is Soviet Armenia in the 20th century. So it's really different, like really different uh, time spans for, for the same culture represented in different museums, depending on the museums. And one uh, other thing that we did, and this, this thing we actually only did for the Russian part of the data, uh, so we actually manually classified like 20% of the data uh, with uh, our own uh, classification, which basically splits the item into items into whether they are personal things like personal letters or you know souvenirs or postcards, or they are artistic items like basically works of art or books, uh, or they are um, governmental things like official, uh, officially issued documents, uh, or uh, yeah, I mean proceedings of some party conferences for that matter. Or uh, I think we also yeah, the money also went into this because they're kind of issued by the state, uh, and you can see again here uh, if we compare. The, uh, here, here we already compare not the, not the representation to museums, but actually the representation of two cultures in one museums. 
And here you can see that uh, it really is driven by the political situation, by the um, by the ideal, ideological concept, by, by, the, by the basically by the role that uh, two different minorities play in the in the society. Like for uh, for the um, in, in this case, we, we we know that Armenia was basically a political entity within the Soviet Union. I mean, it has its own republic, it has its own uh, party, its own party membership. I mean, if, especially if we speak about the Soviet times, which again is the mostly represent, most represented time. Uh, and you can tell that, uh, you can actually see that in the composition of the collection by the uh, big prevalence of governmental items, uh, which, uh, of, uh, which are the, the most dominant ones, and uh, by the very like, little share of personal items. And you have also items which we classified as documentary and research, and these are mostly also official stuff, like you know, research delegation of scientists from Moscow coming to Armenia and is being photographed, this kind of stuff, or again, like some documentary photography of Armenian uh, hydroelectric sta uh, power stations being built, and this is again part of like uh, part of official policy, part of propaganda in some sense, also because it's been uh, it's, it's it's being photographed for the news for the Soviet news. Uh, so uh, yeah, obviously you can you can tell that Jews are mostly represented on like more personal level and uh, also on religious level, like as a culture, as a religion, but not as a uh, not as a, some sort of a political entity or an official kind of agent with whom you need to uh, communicate from Moscow, let's say. But Armenia is represented differently. And this, this shows how, how basically how policies affect the composition of museum collections. And again, uh, this is one last thing I'm going to talk about briefly. This is not the most successful part of the research, to be honest, like the previous ones were much more telling. But uh, me being a computational linguist by training, uh, I was kind of forced to do something with uh, words and with descriptions because, uh, I mean, we had the word semantic in the title and I was kind of, ob I felt obliged that, yeah, we should look into descriptions of the objects. But this is, prob this is really problematic because if you, even if you look for, like for the most common words, you already see a lot of uh, noise. And for instance, on the right side, uh, uh, I will translate it for you. Basically, uh, the, one of the biggest, one of the most frequent words in the descriptions of the Jewish items uh, in the Russian museums are actually just surnames of two random Jewish ladies who were exchanging mail like in the late 1980s. And for some reason, somebody decided to put the whole mail collection in the Russian Historical Museum. And it's not labeled as any kind of collection. It's just like in, in the data, it's just like a lot of rows, which each row represents basically a letter. And this is just an email exchange that went for several years. And they wrote to each other, I don't know, maybe dozens, maybe 100 emails. Uh, not emails, of course, snail mails, like paper mail. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, and you can see how it distorts like the whole thing. And it also, it also affects the other, like it it's also, of course, would affect the other, the other all the other um, uh, graphs that, we, that you see here. So there is bias in it and we didn't, we couldn't uh, avoid it completely. On the other hand, you see on the right, on, on the left side, you see the British, uh, the uh, Jewish item descriptions uh, for the British Museum and you see the most common words in them and you see there is a lot of Christian and Testament, I don't know if it's visible, but uh, there is Testament, there is Saint, so obviously these are not like uh, Jewish representations of Jewish culture or, Jew or Jewish religion for that matter. It's more representation of uh, Christian culture and uh, like saints and so it was all happening in the Middle East context, of course, but it's not really a representation of Jewish culture. So you can see here, you can see this kind of uh, bias of Christianity, which kind of distorts the image of Jewish culture because the, the British Museum is so focused on, on Christian part of it. And yeah, and uh, one final thing bef before I uh, go to the conclusions. Uh, yeah, we tried some semantic clustering with birth embeddings just because I was kind of, again, compelled to try something really semantic and on real text. Uh, uh, and uh, that didn't really work well because basically if you try to cluster the texts of descriptions semantically, there are so many r nearly identical texts for nearly identical coins uh, which were all excavated in some single in some single uh, excavation area. So these are basically, you can detect sub-collections uh, which are within these collections like large chunks of nearly identical objects dug out by some archaeologists and put into the collection of British museums and they're all can they all can be found by the search term Jewish or Jew or Israel for that matter. So yes, yeah, some conclusions and Yale if you want to you can, you can also join me at some point. Uh, so what we see is that uh, British Museum shows Jews and to some extent Armenians as well as more like an ancient civilization and for Jews it's mostly in the Christian biblical context and for Armenians it's 
it's very much in the Roman context, I must say, or in, in the context of other uh, ancient civilizations. So that's already kind of problematic. And uh, it's also more tied to the land as site of finding than to the actual culture and yeah, largely distorted by some broad descriptions of provenance. Like some archeologists write, it was found in Syria slash Israel slash Armenia basically. And yeah, on the other hand, the Russian State Museum doesn't do that because it doesn't have this rich collection of uh, ancient excavated items. But uh, on the other hand, it depicts uh, Jews and Armenians more like minorities within the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union. So it mostly focuses on items produced in Russia or like in, in case of Armenia in Armenia and in the neighboring countries actually. So there was, when I showed the map, there was a lot of Armenian items coming from Georgia, from Azerbaijan even um, in, the, in, the, in the Russian Museum. And that doesn't happen in the British Museum. And yeah, some final conclusions. Yeah, basically we can see that differences in the collections are driven by uh, politics, by social circumstances, by museum policies, but also by metadata structure, by collector's bias. We saw this huge collections added there for some reason, uh, which really make it doesn't, which really seem to make it non-representative in a way, uh, because there are huge biases and also gaps in metadata and uh, this paradata, which is the word I learned just today, and they tell me it's a data about metadata, which I think is cool. Uh, so uh, the paradata should be actually encoded into catalogs, so we don't really know how the how this metadata was created, why somebody decided to write Armenia in a description of some item which has nothing to do in, with Armenia, and how does the British Museum uh, developers, how do they decide that uh, this field should be indexed in a search? That's, that's also a good question. Uh, yeah, and it's, it's really difficult to standardize this paradata as metadata. Yeah, and uh, Yael, do you want to add something to, that, to the conclusion? Because I think you have, uh, or? No, th then thank you for, for listening to this and we hope to hear some questions from you and we'll try to answer them.